Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm just uh, enjoying my lunch here. You know, a lot of people don't believe me when I'm saying I'm a vegetarian. I can't believe I've waited this long to tell you, but I'm a vegetarian. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Speaking of Thanksgiving and vegetarianism, when it comes to this um, upcoming holiday, you don't have to eat turkey. There's a lot of meat alternatives. And in fact, I encourage you and your friends and families to try some because it's actually delicious. And on top of that, turkey is friends, not food. Okay. Hi, I'm Alan. Here at Cyber Vista, we don't really like to offend people with talk of vegetarianism or anything like that. So we got rid of Sam, and I'm going to be your instructor for this week's Quitna. This week on Quitna, we wanted to prepare some folks with some security tips in case you may have to travel and see some siblings that live in another geographical area. So. The first thing to remember when traveling is always put a password or a PIN on your devices. When you put a password or a PIN on your devices, if for some reason you lose it through the course of your travel, this means that no one else is going to be able to access that data as easily. Now, there is a theory, and for the most part it's true, if you gain physical access to a device, you can gain access to the information within. However, in many cases you have to use specialized tools to do so, and therefore, nine out of ten times, the folks that grab your device aren't going to be interested in the data if you have a password or a PIN on it. Now the second tip I want to give you is to never trust a free, open, public Wi-Fi access point or allow any of your devices to auto-connect to it. Now, there's a lot of things that folks can do with a free public Wi-Fi access point. Things like man-in-the-middle attacks occur very commonly when lots of people connect to these, uh, these free, open, public Wi-Fi access points. Things like art poisoning attacks can occur, uh, and beyond that, you don't really know who created that access point. There are a lot of devices out there on the market, things like Wi-Fi pineapples, that actually allow people to create Wi-Fi access points. As an example, if I were in an airport and I just wanted to see who could connect to any or who was willing to connect to any open public Wi-Fi access point, I could use a device like a, a, a pineapple, a Wi-Fi pineapple, to actually create free internet access point, or alternatively name the SSID after the airport name itself. An example would be Dolly's Airport Free Wi-Fi. And in my experience, you would be actually really surprised how many people will actually connect to it. So if you connect to that device, that actually gives me the ability to create a man in the middle and sniff all of the traffic that you would send or receive using that access point. Now we can do this in a variety of ways, issuing a certificate, we could do it through art poisoning, but just know these are dangerous and should never be used unless you absolutely trust the access point. The third and one of the most important tips I would like to give you is to always make sure that your devices are updated, particularly the operating systems. Now, your operating systems, if not kept up to date, as many of you are aware, creates vulnerability. And when we're traveling, sometimes we may even connect to Wi-Fi points at our uh, family's homes, or we may just be using cellular data internet, but it still doesn't protect you from vulnerabilities that may exist on your machine. And if someone were scanning just internet IP addresses and they were to identify a vulnerability on the device that you're using to browse the internet, that could easily create a hole that they can exploit and subsequently gain access to any information you may have on that device, whether that's a phone, a tablet, a laptop, or even your Bluetooth headset. Speaking of Bluetooth, Next up is while you're traveling, it may always be a good idea to actually disable Bluetooth. Now with Bluetooth devices, we've actually gone through several, several iterations of the Bluetooth protocol itself. And many older devices that are using older versions like 2.0 or 3.0 are still vulnerable to many types of attacks. Things like bluejacking and blue snarfing are still very commonplace. So imagine a scenario where you're using a Bluetooth headset in an airport or maybe on a drive and you stop at a convenience store 
and someone decides they want to test to see what technology you're using. Well, if you're using an older headset, you could easily be vulnerable to eavesdropping through a bluejacking attack. So it's always easier to just disable Bluetooth when it's absolutely not needed. Just decide to either use the speakers or play a game or use an alternative uh, method to hear audio or to speak on your device itself. Now the last tip, and maybe the most important tip that I want to give you, is to use social media sparingly. Now there's a few different scenarios here that I'd like to discuss. The first being, when you're traveling, you're not at home. So if you post to social media while you're traveling, telling everyone that you're enjoying your visit, well, you may have a house or an apartment or a trailer, whatever the case may be, that is unoccupied. And that leaves you open to theft. And if you've ever had something stolen from you, you'll note that police typically tell you that most likely it's someone that you know. Nine out of ten times when someone robs you, it's going to be someone you know. And the likelihood that you're connected to them on social media may even be just as high. So that's the first scenario. The second scenario I want to walk you through is if you choose to post on social media and maybe some of your work friends, colleagues, or maybe someone that just doesn't like you very much notices that you're traveling, that even leaves spear phishing attacks vulnerable. It makes your emails vulnerable and it makes the people that are in your workplace vulnerable to believing a spoofing style attack. So the way this would occur would be if someone has access to an open SMTP relay and they know that you're not at work, they can actually spoof your email address and send an email to everyone in your company asking them to click a malicious link or open up a malicious file. And when doing so, they've created a trust relationship with you and therefore the likelihood that they'll actually click the link or open the file is much greater. And since you're not there to see the email or to understand what's happening, you can't as quickly respond, especially if you're in an airport, in the air, or driving at the time that the attack occurs. This is especially important for executive teams, senior level management, and mid-level management. I hope you enjoyed our safety tips. I hope you have safe travels through the holiday, and happy Thanksgiving. Where do you get your protein from? And I'm like, you ever heard of rice, beans, Greek yogurt?